Welcome to Medically Speaking. My guest today is Ashley Shah from Buffalo Therapy Services. Ashley, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we're going to talk today about pelvic floor therapy certification. Uh, but first, let's start off talk, uh, talking out, uh, about your, your training itself with, with PT. Um, how did you get involved in physical therapy? What was your interest in, in doing that? Um, so I graduated from Duval College with my doctorate of physical therapy in 2019. Um, my original interest was because I was an athlete and I thought I wanted to rehab athletes and going through some injuries myself, you know, it was um, something that I felt passionately about after rehabbing. Um, but then I became a little bit more focused on this niche of pelvic floor therapy. I became interested in it shortly after graduating. Um, I became certified in pelvic rehab through Herman and Wallace in 2021, and I've been practicing since. So for the viewers who may not be familiar with it, um, what is pelvic floor therapy and what, what does that treatment consist of? This is a great question. So pelvic floor therapy is the assessment of muscles internally and externally that sit in and around the pelvis. So we're looking at structures that you can't normally see. So I think that makes this therapy a little bit more complex to understand. So I'm glad that you're asking because I don't think a lot of patients know what it entails when they come in. Um, so within our pelvis, we have a lot of organ systems that sit in there. We have our bowels, we have our bladder, we have our intestines, we have our reproductive organs. So asking a lot of questions about how those systems are functioning gives us really good information as to how that pelvic floor is working, but it's really no different than assessing a muscle. It's just in a relatively taboo area. Um, so we would do an internal and external assessment of those muscles and look at their ability to contract and relax and perform all those functions that they're supposed to supporting those organ systems around it as well. So how does a patient end up with this type of issue or they need pelvic floor therapy? Do they know that? Does their primary care doc know that? Is it when they go to a PT that it's diagnosed? How do they know? How do they need that? And what's your typical type of patient look like? Um, I think it's a combination of all three. So oftentimes I'm seeing patients that have had some sort of dysfunction or issue for years and they've seen a lot of specialists and no one's really been able to quite figure it out. There's been some things that have helped, but the issue has not completely resolved. So a lot of referrals that I'm getting are from primary care doctors, colorectal physicians, gastroenterologists, um, urologists, OBGYN physicians. Um, but sometimes patients are just coming because word of mouth and they've heard about it. Um, some conditions that I treat are constipation, diarrhea, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, um, vaginismus or vulvodynia, which is pain surrounding that vaginal opening or within the vaginal canal, um, as well as prepartum and postpartum care. That's really just scraping the surface. There's a lot of things I think that could benefit um, seeing a pelvic floor therapist, but those are some of the primary conditions that I'm seeing right now. So why is it, I mean, it's obviously a touchy subject, but why is it so important for individuals or, you know, potential patients to know about this type of type of treatment? Is it, is it taboo? Is it people are embarrassed or is it just, there's so much unknown about it? I think it's a combination of all three. Again, um, I think that we all go to the bathroom, we all pee, we all poop. And sometimes we have intimacy or connections. And I think that a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about that with a provider. So I'm hoping that opening this conversation as well as doing this uh, medically speaking topic will make people feel more comfortable to bring up those issues either to their provider or to me as well, because it's a function that we all perform. And if it's not performing optimally, then that can lead to some things down the road. And we want to make sure that that's getting taken care of. So let's talk about how that patient ends up getting to you guys. So and we, we touched on it briefly before, but can a primary care doc refer the patient? Does it have to be a specialist? Can it be either? Can they just pick up the phone and call you guys, but they still need a referral? How does someone get to you? So I'm getting referrals from primary care physicians as well as the specialists that I mentioned before. Um, but if you feel that this is a therapy that you need, doctors have been very, very receptive to sending over a referral so that I can do the evaluation and then send them the examination findings. So I do feel really good support from the physicians in our area for this um, specialty service. So a patient can either talk to their physician about it or their health provide, healthcare provider about it, or just call and then we can handle it from there. But we do need a referral at some point. 
And is this the type of therapy that's covered by insurance? Yes, we are accepting insurance for this therapy. And you're at Buffalo Therapy Services on Maple Road there. Um, how long does it take to get an appointment? You know, is there a waiting list? Can someone call and get in in, in relatively quick fashion? Sure. Right now we don't have a waiting list, which is awesome because there are a lot of places that do because this is a service that a lot of people are benefiting from. But we are scheduling out about one to two weeks because your session is a one-on-one -on -one session for one hour. So it does take up a good chunk of time. So just based on the 40-hour work week, we are scheduling out about a week or two. That's Ashley Schaub from Buffalo Therapy Services talking about pelvic floor therapy. Ashley, thanks for joining me today. Thank you again for having me.